It is the start of another week of what's called April, and Loomis is passed the fuck out. But not Moose. Hello, Moose. How's it going? Uh, yes, yeah, so it is Monday, April the 8th. Uh, and, uh, I've not been doing much today so far, but it's only just getting started. Caught up on some YouTube booktube videos. They were pretty good. Uh, and now I'm going to go for a little bit of a walk, check my local bookstores. I, there's not going to be anything today, I don't think so, but uh, I just want to get out and go for a walk and, I don't know, maybe get Burger King. I don't know. ruh eating some Burger King. ruh ruh raggy. Uh, and then uh, just kind of relaxing. Uh, I'm uh, showcasing King Kong Escapes on my Patreon later today, but uh, other than that, I don't really have too many big plans. Uh, the current books that I have on the go is uh, Death Dream on audiobook, the Grand Masterton book. Uh, I started this, which is Aliens Tribes. This one I will definitely finish today. It's very short and quick, but it's like this weird, it's kind of like a novella slash art book. I'm really trying to think of how I'm going to, I think I'll, I will actually, well, I guess I can mark this as both a kid's book and a novella because it's a lot of writing. It's only about 60 pages. I got into the first little bit of it today, and yeah, I really was, oh, yeah, last night, and I was really liking it, and then I also do have Bleeding Skull on the go, so I'll definitely be kind of dropping in and reading some more Bleeding Skull as we go through this week, uh, and then uh, on audio, audio of Death Dream by Graham Masterton. So let us go, explore the day, give these killer pets on their brains, your brain is being pet now, petting that brain. Pet that brain. Oh no, he has no brain to pet. Ow. Okay, I'm sorry. You have a big brain. I'm sorry. Don't bite me. Rude. Streaming King Kong Escapes for my patrons, which is the uh, Japanese movie that is actually an adaptation of the Rankin Bass cartoon show uh, of the t- same uh, era. So this is an adaptation of a cartoon, which is very interesting. Not a sequel to King Kong vs. Godzilla. The strongest living creature on Earth. Oh, heck yeah, Kong. Oh, yes, I remember. I don't want to go with you. True romance. Loomis is currently being his insane self, and, I mean, don't worry, it's been cleaned, but... And it's new litter, so I guess it's okay, but he is uh, back to his old ways of treating litter boxes in this particular area. For no reason, it's just these litter boxes as a freaking beach where he just like rolls around and it's confuting all the other cats. Like, look at Moose. Moose is like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Blueberry is like, what is up with this guy? And then Quad is just like, oh yeah, he's just being him. He's just being himself. That's just how he is. But I like how they're both kind of watching him. I'm just making some hado chaco, chat chucky, uh, and uh, I'm just about finished Aliens Tribes, uh, which is really good. I like it. I like it. It's it is a dark story. It's like one of those things where compared to other tie-in series I've read, uh, you know, it is one of the few franchises that is allowed to kind of go there, especially in the 90s. Like, they let alien writers cover some real dark corners. Like, this has some pretty dark elements in it that makes it even darker than things like, you know, like Warhammer. Like, I read Warhammer all the time. That's why the idea of Grimdark comes up with. But there are elements that Warhammer doesn't really touch, like a lot of sexual stuff like some of it's like hinted at but like this book has goes in there like you know it's it's really interesting it's like this group of mercenaries who have it seems like nearly all of them have some sort of trauma that has led them to to enter this line of work where they basically have to go in and clean out alien infestations and if they don't clean it out in a certain period of time they all die uh, like, because they have to set all these, like, bombs and just, they, if they can't clear the area of aliens, they don't want any more to spread, so they have to blow up the entire station. And, like, there are people who have, like, uh, like uh, physical disabilities in this uh, because they've had, like, pure prior 
encounters with the alien and stuff like that. Um, so like that they're like kind of like mostly like cyborg. So like this guy, he's like basically just like a torso because he lost it with the uh, an encounter with the aliens. Uh, and like the artwork is really good in this. I'm not exactly sure if it's like good extreme horror or not like because there's some elements that i'm kind of like oof i it was impactful but i it's it's kind of hard to say whether or not it was like <laughs> quote unquote good because some of those it's it, it covers some very uh effed up topics um but i'm i am enjoying it the artwork is fantastic like that artwork is just a beautiful uh, and yeah, I'm interested to see how it goes. I only have about 20 pages left, so I'll update, uh, you guys after I read a few more books along with that. So and that is what I'm doing tonight. It was, uh, quite an interesting book to start this, this vlog out with because yeah, it's, uh, it's dark and depressing. So we will see how it ends. Uh, but yeah, like unlike any other tie-in series, Alien is allowed to go places that other series won't go or don't go like even other r-rated series there are things that like they don't touch where aliens seems to be free game to talk about anything and everything or at least it was i i haven't really encountered too much uh of that stuff in the modern alien stuff so uh like though after marvel t has taken over so we will see but yeah it's uh, interesting stuff so uh talk to you guys later so for the old magazine's prompt uh, tonight, I'm reading Famous Monsters of Filmland, and I've already been swearing at, at the letters people made. Everyone's so mean to Godzilla and Gamera in here, and they're all stupid, and I hate them all. I can't believe they said this. Especially you, Al Estrella, from Shrewberry, Massachusetts. I can't believe you said such worthless movies, such as Godzilla vs. Smog Monster, Frankenstein, the Conqueror's World. Both those movies are great, sir. Are great. Anyways, it's very good I didn't grow up with this, or else I'd be probably just, like, continu continuously <laughs> sending letters to famous monster of film land, being like, this person is dumb, and I can't believe they said that. How dare they just decry the good name of Godzilla. And also this dude, freaking Ricky C. Parrish, was like, Room at the Earth Core looks way better than the Gamera sequels. And it's like, bitch, I've seen at the Earth Core. No, it doesn't. Anyways. Uh, so, yeah. Um, other than that, uh, people are uh, complaining about uh, King Kong remake. They called it King Clunk. Because this is 77 right after the 1976 one. So, I mean, that one at least is... Uh, Pretty much uh, the tale as old as time. Uh, if you've ever been a person who complains about remakes, just know it was old in the 70s. Just saying. So the article that is promised by this cover is just a recap of the movie. And it's a very bad one. <laughs> it's not accurate. <laughs> My favorite is a few pages in. They, uh, they say this. Ghidra, the three-headed monster, protector of the land, is awakened and does battle with Godzilla. That doesn't happen in the movie. It's Anguirus who is in it, or Anguilus, depending on the, the W rating. Uh, and you might be like, well, okay, I guess. Like, maybe they, maybe this was based off of, like, an early, uh, a screening and they didn't have any access to it. But then you, like, go a few more pages, and then there's this poster, which has all of the monsters that appear in the film, including Aguirus, who notably has one fucking head. So, someone in the editorial team wasn't really thinking when they did that. Uh, also, I forgot that the original title for um, Mechagodzilla was the Bionic Monster to... Uh, kind of tie into the bionic man over here uh, which is just kind of interesting because it's very weird just hearing people be like at this point the bionic monster and you're like oh it's mechagodzilla why do they keep calling it bionic monster there are some very bad lines in this also by the way spoilers for uh godzilla versus mechagodzilla uh at one point the way that mechagodzilla is defeated is he gets his head ripped off 
Godzilla like gets the thing and he goes and rips his head off. So we get this uh, very uh, bad line. At this point, he could no doubt rip it clean off with one huge yank. But Godzilla is not a yank. He is a Japanese. <laughs> so, but... Anyways, Famous Western Film Land, not high quality uh, publication by any means. Uh, I guess I'll continue to read these. But uh, yeah, no, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I really thought there was going to be like some like tidbits. So anything a review but no it's literally just a recap thanks for it Shay Ackerman I guess so I'm at the ad section of uh, the Fame Monster Film Man and there is an advertisement for paperback horror novels and guess what I actually have a few of these uh, so I actually own this one which is The True Vampires of History by Don F. Glutt not a surprise to see Donnie Glutton here. He was a big fan and a friend of uh, 40 J. Ackerman. Uh, I have uh, one of these Dracula Returns books. I really want the rest of them. I have, I think I have like number seven, uh, which I don't think was released at this point. I think, yeah, I think I have the one that's like a direct sequel to the Dr Drums of Dracula or whatevs. Uh, so I don't own that one, but I do own the Frankenstein Wheel. Oh, no, wait. Sorry, that's wrong. I own the Marrow Eaters. Right, I, I want to own the Frankenstein Wheel. I own the Marrow Eaters. That's the one I own. The sold-out one. It's like, yeah, bitch, it's in my house, even though it's clearly not. What is? But, yeah, that's cool. Hello. So it is Tuesday. Uh, I just got the mail, so I'm going to unbox this in a second. Uh, I have been uh, listening to the audiobook for Death Dream uh, most of today, because I've had to do some running around, do some uh, laundry, dishes, all of that fun stuff. Uh, and I finally got something in the mail that I bought a little bit ago. Uh, so after reading that book, uh, the first Bleeding Skull book, um, I tried to track down some movies from it, that I couldn't find streaming anywhere. And this is one of those. I will show you in a second. I'm going to unbox it now. So one of the movies I bought uh, on VHS. I have not bought a VHS in some time. But this was original. A straight to VHS movie called Offerings. This is uh, literally supposed to be almost a direct ripoff of the movie Halloween. I love Halloween. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, and I just thought it would be very fun to watch a VHS <laughs> of a ripoff. Jeez, sorry, this update has been interrupted three times. Sorry, one of the uh, my, my external speakers for my uh, TV was uh, giving some feedback, so I had to turn it off and mess with the settings a little bit. So anyways, this is a complete ripoff, supposedly, of uh, the movie Halloween. Uh, and yeah, I have this VHS. I'm very excited to sit down and watch that. This is one of three movies that I bought because they were in the book Bleeding Skull. This one was from the 80s, the 80s book that I read. Boop -a -boop. This one is probably the biggest Blu-ray. This is a Vinegar Syndrome, Egra Egfa, which is the American Genre Film Archive. Uh, this is the new Blu-ray. It was a very limited edition, and there was only like 20 left. And I was like, oh, I gotta buy it. So I ended up buying this. Um, so I'm going to be watching that this year. And then to uh, make the full, full round, I have a DVD of this movie, which is from the 1990s one that I started reading uh, literally the 1st of April. It came real crack quick. Like, I was kind of amazed how quick it came. Uh, but yeah, so this is for Asylum of Terra, which is supposed to be a uh, kind of like a... It's it's supposed to have been filmed at an old-school haunted house, like a 90s haunted house. And it's supposed to not be a very good movie, but has all these, like, nostalgic elements from it because it's literally a film, almost shot-for-shot run-through of a haunted house where someone pretty much poured a rough narrative over it so yeah 
Very excited about that. So all of these are going to be things that I will be watching, obviously, for old school April. I'm thinking maybe next week I will have like an official, I'll call it like the Bleeding Skull week of my vlog and just kind of watch a whole bunch because I have a ton of them uh, that were uploaded to straight to YouTube and stuff. So uh, very excited to kind of get through all that. So yeah, fun day. Uh, other than that, I do have sprints uh, with this the corn queen of Louisiana later today, uh, starting at 4.30. Uh, so I'm just going to go for a little bit of a brief walk and uh, listen to more of Death Dream when I get home and I'm sprinting. Uh, I plan on finishing the last like 20 pages of that issue of Famous Monsters of Filmland I was reading, and then uh, probably work on reading a little bit more of bleeding skull physically although i might save i might save that for <laughs> that vlog i was talking about so uh i might read a few more pages and then uh pick up something else so that is what i'm doing today toodaloo so i'm currently sprinting with uh kelsey and cat two k's no thirds uh no third ones uh and then we got moose moosey 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 She's looking up here because I just finished uh, the Famous Monsters of Filmland book that I was reading. And uh, yeah, that was a fun issue. I mean, it's like very campy, very much like clearly made for children. And now Moose is where she's not supposed to. All right, whatevs. Uh, <laughs> the pictures are great. Uh, the information is not accurate. And uh, there were some cool little details that I hadn't heard of before like a lot of uh weird 70s shows that i hadn't heard of before so that was really kind of fun to hear about those some old sci-fi shows that never stood the test of time and no one talks about nowadays and like that stuff is really cool uh i love the letters section and then i also loved the uh the the random pictures uh there's a lot of really cool pictures and the ads were really awesome like the advertisements were so fun, like monster makeup kits and old monster, uh, you know, masks and stuff like that. It was so much fun. Uh, I have never actually, I don't know, well, I mean, I obviously have done it before, but like, it's very rare that I read uh, a, a magazine cover to cover, and I was like, well, if I'm going to get the prompt, I better read it cover to cover. So I was reading everything, and it was really kind of interesting to get a good look at what the what it was like to be a monster kid in the 70s, so... Uh, that was really fun, and yeah, it just the cover is so cool, and I love having it up here on the shelf, and hopefully Moose doesn't knock it over. Now Mia's like, oh my god, that looks like so much work. Imagine jumping up. It's a lot of work, man. I don't want to do that at all. You don't have to, girl. You don't have to. Uh, what should I read next? I feel like I need to read a, like, normal, like, book. I keep reading these, like, oversized books, and it just, like, hurts my hand. It hurts my arm. It hurts my arm. Um, I think I'll wait a little bit on this one. All right, I'm going to look at this, and uh, I'll update you later if I figure out what I'm going to read. Uh, talk to you later. Goodbye. For the uh, short story prompt tonight, I decided to read The Empire of the Ants by H.G. Wells. This is less an animal attack book and more like, Whoa, what if ants were like humans and built societies? And whoa, what if they were colonizing things? Whoa, does that mean that man is actually the villain? I think this works for also the short story prompt and also the Scooby-Doo prompt where it's like man is a real villain because it basically like posits what if ants built a society and that society was built of, of expansion and taking over all the land. And you're like, all right, H.G. Wells, like, I kind of get it. they are like, yo, what if ants were like man? Wouldn't that be effed up? Whoa, isn't it effed up that man does this? And you're like, okay, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> like it, it was like twenty eight pages. It was fine. It's not H. G. Wells' best work, I wouldn't say. Uh, the Empire of the Ants is like more interesting in the vinyl 
like little portion of it like the last two to three pages where it's like summing up like whoa these ants are like taking over like most of south america and it's positive that by the 1950s they will discover europe so it's like almost like a reverse colonization where like you know the europeans discovered the americas and horribly ruined everything for the people living there but now it's like whoa what if it was in the reverse and the ants were like whoa they went and they there's even like a thing where they like take over like a little ship there's like a ship and ants take over the ship but it's like not really the ants were like they like killed everyone on the ship but they didn't really take it over but like the obviously the idea was that they bird boarded the ship and then they took it over but like the ants were not like rigging the sails and like piloting it really so i don't know i don't know i'm i'm willing to bet that peter tremaine's ants has a lot more murderings of uh people with ants so if i want to read an ant murder story i'll read that one this one's fine it's whatevs it's whatevs it's a very simple idea so you know whatever whatever now, time to get back to spring ants. What is this weird pose Lewis is in? Good morning. Good morning, good morning. It is the next day, which makes this a Wednesday. And nothing's better than Wednesday pets with Lewis. Because he's kitty 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 kitty. Ah! Baby, beat me, I'm dying. So today, I'm probably going to, um,. Work on maybe finishing the audiobook for Death Dream, uh, because I'm going to go for a little bit of a walk after I get everything prepared today. Look a little moosey goosey. Little goosey moosey moosey goosey goosey goose. And then, um, after that, I'm not really sure about my next physical book. I did decide that, yeah, next week is when I'll finish and read, reread the rest of that Bleeding Skull book, so I will leave that one for now. Uh, I did really late last night, and just like the first few pages, uh, excuse the mess here, but I literally did just wake up, uh, I did read the first few pages of this, the Spider-Man super thriller, Deadly Gear, featuring Hub Goblins, my favorite type of goblins of the Hub variety. Um, I've only read a few pages. This is, I love how beat up this is. <laughs> Uh, but this is like super short it's like 100 pages and there's like pictures and stuff so uh, i will probably read this and probably will finish this today if i if i really want to so uh other than that though i'm not sure where the day will take me or moose or blueberry or nami where will the day take us so this is going on right now uh Blueberry is like going on his thing, like going like, "Oh hey, hey, how's it going? I'm relaxing." And then every time he gets too close to Nami, Nami starts growling at him. She's just like, "Gurg, get away from me!" Yesterday, he was like laying on the bed. He got a little too close to Nami, and Nami just whoosh, smacked him. Just smacked him. Uh, and to be fair, when Blueberry gets excitable, he apparently sets off car alarms. But uh, other than car alarms, uh, when he gets excitable, he'll like fight cats like he'll like jump on them and like they'll have like a little tussle because like that's kind of how he is and so earlier today i don't know who somebody got it at, at nami so she has not been in a good mood today uh like look at this like somebody jumped nami i it was either blueberry or claude it's more likely claude uh but like Sometimes it's like can be like the the mix of like the two cats because like I think Blueberry was around and she was already grumpy about Blueberry and then like she probably swatted Claude and that's what happened. She's okay. Obviously, there's no no harm, no foul, and most of that is because like the the reason most of that hair is there is because she's in the process of uh, shedding her winter coat. So like it's not like somebody was like ripping out big tufts of hair, but there was certainly like a big like. <laughs> And then uh, I came and freaking Nami was hiding under the bed and Claude was being a jerk. So um, I believe it was Claude who chased her, but I, who knows? Because Blueberry was also right there and he was all puffed up tail. So it's hard to tell. Uh, Blueberry gets smacked a lot because he's also doing the smacking. So, you know, he kind of gets what's coming to him. But Nami is not a fan of Blueberry. <laughs> she 
<laughs> she's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, baby. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, baby. And I don't think Wistoria is a big fan of Blueberry either. <laughs> Chill. Because <laughs> sometimes, because Blueberry, like, loves to cuddle with me. And, like, sometimes I'll be, like, in the position to cuddle with, uh, oh, 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 hello, 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 hello. Anyway, <laughs> sometimes, don't go back up, dude. Dude, don't do it. Leave her be. Leave her be. Leave her be. Leave her be. Sometimes he will get in the way when Wisteria is trying to cuddle with me. Uh, and Wisteria will smack him too. But as you can see, uh, Nami is like, stay away from me. Oh, you got some little buildup on your eyes. I'm about to get the cloth out and clean you up. But I'll let you kind of relax here for a little bit. Because you've had a stressful morning, little girl. So I will have to wash your eyes out later. Later, later, later. But yes, that's how uh, cat relations is going in my apartment. <laughs> Nami is like, get these guys out of here. And also, Moose and Wisteria do not get along. But mostly that's Moose just slapping her. <laughs> so it's 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 become like a, a, a thing where Nami and Blueberry don't get along and Moose and Wisteria definitely do not get along. And then claude and blueberry don't really get along but like they can kind of like stomach each other and play a little bit but occasionally they get a little too rough because they're boys um like just that they that they play right rough not that it's <laughs> not that it that's anyways um so i have to separate them once in a while and then <laughs> you can literally hear him growling He's, he's, he's so great here. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to turn the, the bike off to make Blueberry hang out in a different place. But yeah, uh, Loomis is kind of ambivalent to both of them. Claude and... Oh my god, you are trying to... You are about to jump on her. Claude uh, and Moose, though, love each other. They're like cuddle, cuddle up and snuggle and all that stuff. So that's been your cat update, which nobody asked for. But you got it anyways, bitch. I love you, Nimi. We've had some negative cat uh, footage where cats are not getting along. But rest assured, there, there is still peace in the household. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them boys and lady hanging out together. Uh, I am just about done uh, Dream Warriors. So I just I like have like 20 minutes left. So I mean, <laughs> Death Dream. <laughs> the sequel to Night Warriors, which obviously is very much inspired by Nightmare on Elm Street 3 dream warriors anyways <laughs> i will i just want to catch the footage of them hanging out i'll update you in a second okay so yes i did finish uh death dream graham masterton's death dream that was quite fun i mean it, it very much is similar to the first book although i actually liked it a little bit more than the first book uh these are like very they're, it's weird it's weird because like the horror is very much like graham masterton horror but then, like, kind of halfway through, it gets this dark fantasy element that, like, kind of feels like a Power Rangers-esque thing. And it's just, like, a interesting, like, a, a, a deep switch <laughs> halfway through the book. But then horror stuff is still happening alongside it. It's really interesting. It's kind of like, I guess you'd describe it as, like, a dark fantasy if you were going to look for a word for it. Uh, but it was fun. It was fun. Uh, like... Like the last one, I think Graham Masterton has uh, not the best at writing people of color. I, it's nothing like overtly like offensive. It's more like, a, oh, this is a white dude writing this kind of thing uh, from the '80s. It's it's better than last last time, uh, but you know it is still very noticeable. Uh, that being said, there was some really good stuff about disability here. Because, like, the main plot is, like, there's this kid who every time he goes to sleep, this creature comes out of his brain and just kills everybody around him. So his father is, like, in one of the first creature attacks, gets disabled. Like, he gets, like, a, a spinal injury and he is uh, disabled. So he's, like, with all of these other people who have, like, gone through disabilities in this, like, clinic as he's recovering and it's really interesting. Like, I think it's a really good, uh, interesting story there that I really, really did like that element. And then uh, the fantasy element is like there is this, uh, like this thing that's like supposed to be the god of all gods 
who gives certain warriors powers to defeat demons inside of a dream. And it's very much like, you know, you're thinking, uh, like, night n- dream warriors from uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street one. So <laughs> it's very much in that kind of silly ilk. Uh, while doing that, uh, <laughs> I uh, was doing uh, some model work again because this is the, this model that I've been going on forever and yeah so the dragon looks badass I love the dragon I love the dragon this dude I royally effed up so if you notice uh he's got a sci-fi gun now and you probably like why why is this man who's clearly a fantasy dude have a sci-fi gun and that's because back when I first tried to put a, together a uh, like a Necron thing, which is like the Warhammer 40k thing. This is from Warhammer Old World Fantasy. Uh, but I messed up one of the arms on there. So I had a spare arm. And I just was like, you know what? I'm just going to – because I couldn't find the other piece that was supposed to be like from here. Uh, so I was just like, you know what? He just got a sci-fi gun now. And, like, I think from, like, this angle, it actually doesn't look too bad. Now, obviously, if you go here, you could see that it's not really attached, right? You can see that. But if you look at it from this angle, it looks good. Like, this kind of angle, you can see him. He's probably like, oh, I'm trying to get a shot off, but the cat is in the way. And, like, that's perfect. That's perfect cat. Obviously, the cat was not on that gun before, so I just glued the cat onto the gun. I'm going to paint him up like Loomis. But yeah, I just decided to give him a sci-fi gun. It's whatevs. Uh, This thing was supposed to go down here, but I positioned him wrong. I think he's supposed to go down slightly. So like this was because this gets in the way if I tried to put it where it's supposed to go. It's not a big deal. Um, I did use some nail polish remover to like clean up and, and remove some stuff. Um... I will say, uh, I did not realize how powerful nail polish remover is, uh, (laughs) because it's actually warped some of these. Um, I did not realize how, uh, intense nail polish remover is, uh, but that's fine. I think what has happened is I'm going to probably do like another load of nail polish remover to get some of this excess glue off here, and then I'm going to paint him. Uh, so I'll probably do that tomorrow if I find like a good audiobook. But anyways, this is a kind of a stupid but fun uh, thing. And then uh, the other, the other, the other, the other uh, thing I was building, I was building a dude, and I was missing a piece for the dude. And yeah, it's right here. My dumb, dumb face did that. Uh, and this is where I really learned about the powers of acetone which I did not realize. Um, so I had, I was trying to, I, I was basically trying to like kit bash him to like have a different arm. So I had too much like nail polish, like I had too much super glue. So I kind of like dunked him in nail polish remover a little bit. And like he melted, he kind of melted, which is like, it's not a big deal cause he's a skeleton. So like, I'm just going to like probably like carve that, this part off like that that little extra goopy part off and then maybe maybe not even give him another arm and just have him be like an like a armless dude who yells a lot that's kind of fun that's kind of fun so it's not a big deal but yeah i was like oh whoops i was like oh wow because there was two things that i was like trying to attach to him to and i soaked it in the acetone and it just melted it. And I don't know if that was because it had a weird reaction with water. Like, I don't know if that was the issue. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, anyway, so <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit more of that tomorrow and paint some of these guys, put some put some of that stuff together. So that will be what I will do. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's all for tonight. I'm uh, probably going to read a little bit more, probably maybe watch something tonight. I don't know. Uh, but uh, nothing to update you with. Uh, I will let you know if I do anything exciting tomorrow morning. So a tootle ooh. Okay, first update of Thursday. I'm doing sprints for Patreon with Kelsey. Uh, I don't know why I'm <laughs> Kelsey. She called me Andrew. She said it all fancy, so I'm saying Kelsey, like a fancy way. Um, so most of today, I went for a walk, I listened to a whole bunch of podcasts, um, you know, 
Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Sorry, sorry. Claude is bullying Nami. Hey, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Leave her be. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. So what I've been doing most of the day is I have been working on painting miniatures. So since I finished putting together the last finishing touches on the uh, the model for the dragon yesterday, uh, I spent the morning doing my first coat of uh, primer. So I do a black primer. And now I'm just working on doing the, la the first kind of pass at the... Uh, doing the bone white and he looks pretty good so far so i'm just trying to paint the bone parts of the bone dragon and it always looks better when you have the base of like the black primer so i think it's looking pretty good so far i'm gonna let this kind of dry and i think i'm done with this for tonight uh, i think tomorrow i'm gonna try and do a little bit more of like do some like gray like do maybe a gray coloring for this and then I have like some gray stuff there uh, and do like a kind of like a, a bit of that. Uh, and then I kind of stayed away from the, the dude's face because I want to use little baby ones to, to get those like harder to reach parts. But I just wanted to put on the first load of uh, paint there and I actually think it looks pretty good. So we will see how this goes tomorrow when I work on it. I started listening to a Doctor Strange audiobook, book, uh, which I have from NetGalley and I'm liking it so far, but I'm really only very early into it. Uh, it is an arc that is recapping the first six issues of uh, the original Doctor Strange, I believe it said. Uh, and so far, I'm really liking it. I have not read those actual very early Doctor Strange issues, but I think the uh, the book is really fun so far. So I will let you know how that goes. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to go and read something physically for the rest of the night tonight. Okay, I will talk to you guys later and uh, have a good one. So I have been having some trouble <laughs> sticking with books lately. Uh, so the Spider-Man novel I showed you at the start of uh, the vlog, I DNF'd that. Not because I didn't like it, but when I woke up in the morning, I didn't feel like reading it anymore. So I was like, I'll, I'll save it for Garbagus. Because for Garbagus, I want to do a bunch of comic book tie-ins. So I was just like, I'll just save it for Garbagus. So then I picked up the, uh, the novelization for the TV miniseries Gargantua, and I read the first chapter of that, and it was actually pretty good. But then I decided I'm going to read it in May. Why, you may ask? I don't know, man. I don't know. I was just like, I'm going to read this in May, because I think I'm going to do like a dinosaur-esque thing in May. So uh, hopefully this will... <laughs> will hold my attention this is for my vampire novel this is like vampires in space written by george R. R. martin it's got huge text and a ton of uh pictures so i'll give it a chance i've always wanted to read this i d i think i'm gonna read this and then i'll probably give this away like i'll probably trade this in at my local like used bookshop just because i don't know it's like a sci-fi original series tie-in artwork if i like this book i'll uh <laughs> i will uh change it for something else and even if i don't like this book so it's gonna be a one and done read probably but we will see maybe i'll change my mind hopefully i can stick with it mm -hmm. i'll let you know before i go to bed if i'm actually gonna stick with it bye watching the toei monster encyclopedia just some hour-long video on youtube that was, i think was an old vhs back in the day released by toei video and it's mostly gonna be like common rider and super sentai footage Sounds fun to me. This is all in Japanese with zero subtitles. I have no idea what's happening, but I'm in love. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Whoa! What? Hell yeah. Oh my god, they're going up against the McDonald's if it was a person. Oh my god. What is that thing? <laughs> oh my lord! What on earth? I can't even tell the design of that thing! What is he doing? <laughs> this is the greatest thing I've ever seen! Yeah! Whoa! <laughs> get him! Get him! Oh, he's been gone. Loomis is like, what the fuck is going on? If it's good enough for Loomis, it's good enough for all of us. 
So this is like, what is wrong with you? Oh, who's playing a violin? Oh, they beat him up and playing a violin? That's badass. Oh, that's the most baller move I've ever seen. He beats the crap out of him, puts a foot on him, and then plays a violin. Yes. Dude, 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 look. It's Pudgy Pig. Pudgy Pig is right there from Power Rangers. This is showing where they build all of them. This is so cool. Yeah, look, it's a Pudgy Pig. Oh, you can see him in the lot. I don't know. I can't see him in here, but. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. I love the look of, like, the, these areas where these guys are just making these amazing costumes. Five out of five. Look at him just like being like, hmm, yes, this is appropriate for weird kids in the 90s. This will change American culture forever. Look at how beautiful it is. So I think they're clearly doing, uh, like, pre-production in this for Zoo Ranger, which is the, you know, which is what Power Rangers was based off of, because I'm pretty sure that is a prototype of the Red Red Ranger helmet. I think so, just because, like, looking at it. Well, not that, although... Th these are my four personalities, though. Showing an uh, American movie for the old school April peeps. Uh, I love this movie so much, and I'm glad to share it with others. So, uh, I did finish. Uh, I had sprints with Kelsey tonight, and I did finish uh, Night Flyers. Uh, I've, it was a cool illustrated edition that has like a lot of artwork in it, and I think that was kind of the coolest part. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this was not a bad book by any means. Uh, like that's a pretty rad painting, but it's not. It's not that great either. It's fine. Uh, George R. R. Martin clearly uh, expanded and got much better as a storyteller as he went on through his career, which actually is kind of heartening uh, instead of being disheartening. I kind of like it when somebody's not perfect from the start and then as their career goes on, they get better and better and better. So it's actually kind of cool that that, that is the case here. Uh, the book is like a sci-fi novel and I, that's where a, a lot of my iffiness and not fully enjoying it uh comes in because the sci-fi elements are really kind of overdone in that typical uh sci-fi of the time where there's a lot of very dumb words and a lot of dumb names and it's very silly but taken very seriously and like you know sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't for whatever reason it didn't completely work here uh and they have some very dumb names like like for whatever reason they they call people getting it on sexed sex sexed sexed and it's like what is why why they had the sexed and you're like okay that's dumb why why is that a thing okay whatevs but the actual plot is pretty good and creepy uh so when it's when it's focusing on the plot and some of the more cosmic and horror and the weirdness going on because it's these group of people going on a research missing mission on this uh, ship that they have uh, acquired uh, passage with. And it's a very odd ship, but they're trying to find these ancient uh, aliens that are rumored to have been flying around the stars for billions upon billions of years. Uh, and they're going out on a research mission, uh, and things start to go awry. Uh, and it seems like there's some kind of presence on the ship that is like going against them and that stuff was it was that as just a plot was was fun again the dialogue is bad the die he uh, george r. r martin was not good with dialogue especially at this time uh the dialogue really kind of does uh, end up kind of grading a little bit uh but other than that um it's a fun it's a fun little read it's a fun little read it's nothing super uh important to ever read but uh i mean there's there's worse ways that i've uh spent an evening so <laughs> i had fun with this at least and i'm glad i read it uh because it is a interesting uh chapter in a uh, author that i quite enjoy weirdly enough i think of all of george r, r. martin's work uh, i think this is the most adapted version because there is an 80s movie uh that is an, an adaptation of night flyers and then uh, there is the sci-fi original series, which is what this version was uh, released 
under. And I don't, I, I have not seen either. I might be interested to watch the 80s movie. I definitely am not going to watch the TV series. Uh, anyways, that is what I read tonight, and now I'm going for the Betty Buys. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. Teenage Mutant Ninja Loomis. Teenage Mutant Ninja Loomis. Teenage Mutant Ninja Loomis. Loomis in a book cart. Kitty Power. Loomis looks less impressed with Ren and Stimpy. I've never seen one of them. I've never seen any of these cartoons, Loomis. Don't judge me. King Kong Garfield? I remember this ending for King Kong. They get abducted. Hell yeah. Loomis, do you want a dog? Should we get a dog? See? Look, Garfield loves the dog. Do you, we should get a dog. Come on. We can get a little dog for you. We'll get an Odie for you, Garfield, bitch. It's a lot of work, though. So, probably not because they bark a lot, so. But, imagine. Imagine. In a mood to uh, continue watching things that are animated today, I'm going to be starting and probably finishing, let's be real, uh, the uh, online web series Hell of a Boss, uh, which is by the same creators that did Hasman Hotel, and since that show has become my personality, I'm like, oh, I want to watch their other stuff. And since everyone's got, like, old-timey outfits, and it's very much, uh, nostalgically based, in hell, uh, it can't, bitch. Or be in your dreams like my dad did? Sir? Because right now, all I see is just my dad's asshole talking to me. Cry I'm sorry. Loomis loves cartoons. Are you gonna run off with him? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to record you while you were enjoying a show. I'll stop. It's a mobster shark. That's almost close to a mobster barracuda. Just saying. Chomp, 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 chomp. And I finished it. <laughs> I watched all 16 episodes that have been released so far, and I loved it. I loved it. The very early, early pilot, before they did, like, the episodes one to, like, the seasons and stuff like that, there was one joke that I was like, oof. That language is not good. And then they realized that they, that never came up again. So other than the first pilot, one joke of the first pilot, I thought this was pretty flawless. And uh, I uh, loved it. And this last episode was so incredibly sweet. And I did not expect that going in. It's like all these clowns and all the designs. I think like the reason why I love all these shows, I'm like, look at these designs. They're so cool. They're all so good. They're all so good. Like every freaking scene you go into there's an awesome freaking design it's so good the designs are so good the animation is so good and it's like it starts out where you think it's going to be one thing and it's just going to be like a very silly show but then it like uh introduces an emotional core and then you're really sad and heartbroken by the end but also your heart is warmed up it's very sweet anyways uh i guess i'm gonna go for a walk and then read to lou despite establishing cat drama earlier uh, as you can see they all get along okay most of the time. It's just occasionally where they get a little scrumpy and rumply. Uh, but these two, they don't like each other normally, and they're getting along now and just relaxing. So, there's usually peace, but occasionally there is war. It is the human condition. I don't know where Wisteria is. But... I guess it's also not the human condition because they're cats. Whatevs. Oh, yawn laser. Spreading with Kelsey and Blueberry just spilled my wine everywhere. Great. Great. Rip wine. Rip wine. Good morning. Um, uh, it actually is the morning. It's only about 9 a.m. Uh, I just finished Radiant Black Volume 5. I got through most of it last night, but I uh, decided to save a little bit for it this morning. And this is really, really good. Again, very much. I kind of read this in, like, the relation to the Power Rangers prompt. It's very kind of Power Rangers in, like, the colors and the way the characters look and, and things like that. Because, uh, like, look, that's very Power Rangers looking uh, suits. And also, uh, the author, Kyle Higgins. Uh, he wrote a bunch of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, original comics. Well, they're obviously not original because they're based off the show, but 
So he has that kind of style in his writing. Uh, I really, really, really like this. This might actually be my favorite volume of the series so far. Uh, because so near the end of last volume, there is a shift where a decision has to be made between two people and they have to decide who is going to take up a mantle. I don't want to put in too many spoilers, but uh, this comic is told from a perspective of one character who took the mantle and then you're like, okay. And then it does a flip and shows what would happen if the other character took the mantle. And it does that for the four issues. So you, you actually read very similar events happening in two very different ways because of who is behind the mantle and is taking up this challenge uh, for Earth. And it's really, really interesting because it makes it difficult to figure out which character was actually more better suited for this challenge because there's like pluses and minuses between both of uh, their scenarios and the way that they deal with things. And yeah, I just really, really liked it. Like I thought it was really impressive and awesome uh, in a very unique way of telling uh, a more bigger giant story. So this was really awesome. This was really cool. Uh, Radiant Black is continuing to be uh, a very enjoyable comic book. So that is that. Uh, today, 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 I'm going to give you Mr. Pat on the head. Uh, I am going to be finishing uh, Doctor Strange, The Interdimensional War, uh, which is the audiobook that I have going on. I only have about five hours left of that, so that will not be long. But then I am going to read some comic books going through a, a big batch of comic books that I had like set aside. The, for updates, you're going to get Doctor Strange, The Interdimensional War, and then the uh, comic books as well. I might start Fallout, the TV show. I'm undecided, though. I'm undecided. People say it's good, and I believe them, but I also just marathon a TV show yesterday, so... Hey, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Willow! Willow, willow, willow. Okay, I'm being weird. Bye. Hello. Uh, I just finished Doctor Strange: The Dimension Wars, and that was so. That was a uh, audiobook uh, that I got as an arc from NetGalley, and it was a newer adaptation. So it's kind of a novelization of the first. Oh, it's got to be like maybe twenty or so issues of Doctor Strange. Uh, and back in the day, he was part of a comic book called Strange Tales. So in like it ends at like the first like issue I could find that was like the ending of it, I think it was Strange Tales number 146, but which is kind of confusing because Dr. Strange was obviously not in a hundred comics by that time. It was just he was part of a ongoing comic book series called Strange Tales. Anyways, it's it novelizes those uh 20 or so issues and i really really liked it i thought it was really charming uh titan is doing because it's a titan books titan book release set titan books is doing a lot of weird novelization experimentation lately because titan books for ages was like the master of novelization it was a big part of their business model uh if they would find a movie they would not only do a novelization but oftentimes they do a prequel and that was kind of one of their big hallmarks for uh their business model and they're really some of the only places that still do novelizations in any format. Uh, and this is interesting because this is kind of they also did a novelization of the 60s Ultraman show. Uh, and I read that physically uh, and I did not love that one as much as I loved this one. Uh, and I, I wonder if it was just because it was less episodes. So like uh, the original Ultraman show has like far and above more episodes than the issues that were being recapped here also um there was less of a like pick and choose like they would describe even events that they don't or issues they don't go in exhaustive detail over in the novelization they still reference it and talk about it and have like a little thing about it whereas the ultraman show kind of left the novelization kind of just by the nature of it trying to be a book that you could read in like 300 pages had to cut out a ton of great episodes 
uh, and had to pick and choose the best, quote unquote, best ones. And I felt like that maybe the ones that were novelized were not particularly the best ones to do that with. But this book I had a great time with. Now, this is one that I'm looking at all the other reviews and people do not like it very much. It is a very episodic book and it's an episodic book that is recapping a comic book series. So like you feel that you feel the serialized nature of the book as you're going into it. Uh, and for me, that, that I didn't see that as a negative. I kind of felt that uh, was something very cool and very unique and very interesting uh, and was just kind of brought me back to like it almost felt like you were listening to like Saturday morning cartoons in a lot of ways. Uh, and there is a little bit more to it. Like the writing is actually done pretty well. And I listened to the audiobook and I really liked the audiobook narration, which is another thing that a lot of other people did not seem to care for that much. So that's just kind of an interesting thing to note. It, it is very cosmic, uh, but in that way of like comic book cosmic, where it's not necessarily horror based, but there is a lot of weird, creepy things that kind of happen in this like cosmic landscape that a lot of these stories take place in. Now, admittedly, uh, I really like this. I have not read a lot of the issues, uh, or many. I have read Run, because the epilogue is recapping a Spider-Man issue that he appeared in, and I did read that back in the day, uh, which was really fun to, to listen to that as the epilogue, because I was really like, whoa, this is like I'm going back to reading this uh, Spider-Man comic in high school. So it's, like, it's really cool to hear like a novelized version of it, and it was a good novelized version of it. I really like that. Um, but... Other than that, I hadn't read any of the comics before, but I know that – so these were all the Steve Ditko uh, artists, and I feel like part of the appeal of the Steve Ditko Doctor Strange was the art – uh, specifically he like Stan Lee did uh, all of the like the dialogue and stuff like that but Steve Ditko did the art and th some of uh, beautiful amazing art pieces when I looked up these uh, issues and obviously putting that into a format where you can't go into all that detail because you don't show physical photos of a thing uh, is a, a different experience. Uh, I thought it was an experience that I quite enjoyed and had a great time with. Uh, and I kind of am glad that Titan Books is continuing on this weird attempt to find a new form of novelization that they can kind of uh, take advantage of. Because uh, this is, again, another uh, thing doing things from the 60s and telling it with just like it's this one definitely did not feel like there was a modern lens to it but it had some of the more uh clearly problematic elements of the character uh because it was written in the 60s by, by a bunch of white dudes about tibet and those kind of things but took that and uh made a really interesting story out of it and they didn't change a whole lot but they changed uh some of the uh more problematic elements to make it uh, appeal to a more modern reader and a lot of times it's really hard to get someone to go back in the past to watch like say for ultraman it's really hard to get someone to watch a show from the 60s or for comics, it's really hard to get someone to read a comic book from the 1960s. It's not something that people normally do. So something like this could definitely be a benefit. Uh, I think this would be like one of those books that's like great for kids and teenagers. Like for me, I had a great time with it, but I'm also <laughs> I'm a little bit worried that I've arrested development in my taste. But uh, I, because I had a great time with it, but uh, I feel like for most adult readers, they probably would not get a whole lot out of it. But for me, I was like, oh, this is like a fun adventure story, uh, and I love the comic books and all of that. So I had a great time with Doctor Strange Dimension War. While finishing that book, I worked a little bit more on painting the Necrolith, ne Necrolith Dragon. Um, and, you know, it's going okay. It's going okay. I got some, like, green highlights on here. I need to figure out how to make these look more weathered because it's very much like a vibrant gray and i probably just need to look and figure out how to make things a little bit more weathered uh and then see if i want to just, yeah see when you get close to here like i need to do another coat with the uh the white just because it's getting kind of missing some spots here and there but uh, this is just like the first kind of coat, first kind of draft that trying to do a creature like this. And also technically, like, if you look at it from this angle, it looks pretty cool. Like, so it does, it's not until you get really close that you start seeing like little 
uh, details that are bad. So, I mean, I'm I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the weird guy. I need to get some uh, orange because I want to make that cat Loomis. And then uh, I think I'm probably going to take a break from this for a while, though, because it's like mostly just a little little parts that I got to do. Like, it's going to be horrible trying to fucking finish that man. And I am scared to do it. So <laughs> so anyways, uh, that's what I'm doing today. I'm now going to read uh, some actual comic books and not just comic book adaptations and just kind of relax and uh, chill for the rest of the day. I'm going to try to pull a real Loomis. Be chill. Oh my god, focus on Loomis. Thank you. Look at him beautiful boy. Talk to you later. I was going to lay down here and read comic books, but... I do not have the heart to move the kitties. And they look so cute, they're snuggled up. So I'm like, well, you win this round, kitties. First, what first happened was Loomis was sleeping there. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go into the other room and, like, you know, review my arc that I had and do some other, like, running around looking at stuff. And I knew Loomis would come join me because that's what Loomis does. If I'm not in a room, Loomis will go, hey, where is, where is he? Where is he? Let's go find him. And he'll find me. So he did. And then I was like, Mwahaha, now I can lay on the place that you were laying, Loomis. But then I come in. Cuteness, cuteness personified is happening, so. Cuteness personified is happening. Wamp, wamp, wamp. Wamp, wamp, wamp. Wamp, wamp, wamp. Oh, well. I'm just going to sit on this chair and read. <laughs> it's not a big deal. <laughs> Anyways, update you when I'm done. Moose, 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 my goosey. Moose, my goosey. My goosey, goosey. So I just finished reading a whole bunch of comics. So let's talk about them now. So this was a very fun, very, like, one-shot comic where a very goofy monster fights Godzilla. And he's intro- the monster is introduced in the most goofy way, like, where it's like, all of these people who are nuclear scientists show up to an island at the invite of a mysterious stranger who's going to give them a million dollars. And then they're like, whoa, what's going on? What do you want? We just want the million dollars. What do you want from us? And she's like, I want you to look at this nuclear fission reactor I'm doing. And they're like, "Uh, okay. And then all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, there's something alive in there. And he's like, yes, bitch. He's living. It's my monster. And then she releases the monster. The monster kills his, kills all those scientists' families because they're, like, waiting on a boat when they go and collect their million dollars. Uh, and then it just shows up and uh, it looks like here it's Sydney. I could not really tell if it was, like, where it was set, but I guess apparently it was set in Sydney, Australia. Uh, and uh, it's just a fight with Godzilla and this monster. And the monster is very goofy. And the fight is very fun and silly. And the villains are silly. And it's like sets up like a future issue, like issue 16. I think that this is probably near the end of Dark Horse Comics Godzilla run. So I just think it's fun. I always like, I like these really silly, cheesy 90s Godzilla comics uh, where they are just kind of like very goofy B-movie plots uh, with a lot of cool action and awesome artwork. So I had a great time with this. The Thunder Down Under. I mean, I guess, yeah, it's clearly in Australia if it's called The Thunder Down Under. Uh, Then this is the only uh, (laughs) full-on graphic novel I read, because this is actually five issues of Symbiote Spider-Man Alien Reality. So this is... Now, (sighs) this is hard to say where this actually takes place, because the Marvel Universe has, like, a shifting timeline, but... This is hearkening back to 80s comics where uh, in Secret Wars, uh, Spider-Man got a new costume that was this black costume that was like living and could like form, uh, you know, webs from his like just without web shooters or anything like that. Uh, And eventually it got taken off of him because it was like kind of running him while he slept. And he was like, oh, my God, this alien symbiote has to get off me. Like, I can't stand this anymore. And then... The symbiote went on to uh, Eddie Brock and then became the supervillain Venom. Uh, so this is set in between getting the the costume in Secret Wars and him removing the costume uh, and it be- and becoming the symbiote becoming Venom. So this was a lot of fun. It was very fun to read. This is written by Peter David, so it had a very classic style. 
And it was like this alternate universe story where uh, so, uh, Dr. Sh- uh, Baron Mordo and Hobgoblin team up to like read a magic book to change reality. But they want to keep the heroes alive so that they can understand how much they bone their reality. Uh, a very typical like uh, Elseworlds story. But it's fun to read a team up from like uh, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange uh, right after I finished reading that book about Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. Uh, the artwork to the, for this was pretty fun. Uh, the action was pretty fun. And it was just a very fun, silly, goofy storyline. So I had a great time with it. And I'm definitely going to read more of these. Um, I'm just not sure. Because like I... Originally, I was going to put this as, like, set in the 80s and 90s, like a newer thing, but it's set in the 80s and 90s. But the problem is, with Marvel, I actually don't know if when this was published, it was set back when those original issues were published. So, it, it's a little wibbly-wobbly. I know it's before 2001, so it still counts as in a, in a vintage setting, but it's, I don't think it was from the 80s or 90s, because uh, of the weird timeline. But it was hearkening back to those comics, but... I will not put it in for that prompt. But yes, this was a a ton of fun. And I need to read more of these uh, Symbiote Spider-Man books because they're just so fun. Uh, Then I read this Predator novel. Uh, Not a novel, it's a comic. But this is the return of John Schaefer, who is Dutch Schaefer, Arnold in the movie's brother. He was in those early Dark Horse comics uh, that I've read the novelizations for the first one. And I'm going to read the novelization for the second one soon. But... He is an interesting character, um, but they don't really go into him too much here, and it's just kind of an interesting little oddity. Hey, 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 hey. No, 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 no. Hey. No. Why are you up there? That's where my dragon is. You gotta leave a dragon alone. Girl, 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 seriously. Uh, They don't really get into the character much in this one he is just kind of like vaguely hinting at those dark horse comics and i and it's i don't even know if they're allowed to fully go into all of it because of rights issues like i'm surprised they're even allowed to talk about this character considering that they come from a dark horse comic but anyways regardless uh he's in here he doesn't do a lot but they're kind of setting up a fun interesting story and there's apparently a big bad predator that's super badass that they're gonna have to fight which is i guess cool i mean i don't know it's a it's a predator comic it's fine it's enjoyable it's enjoyable it's silly it's you know modern predator (laughs) i enjoy it but you know it is what it is uh godzilla war for humanity uh this was a fun issue um a a bit funner than the other issues in this series because i've kind of found it a little bit hit or miss but this is like there's like a big godzilla fight in this against a giant weird plant monster that pukes on a bunch of people and when it pukes on you you go crazy and you work for the plant monster I don't know, it's kind of fun, it's kind of weird, it's kind of goofy, uh, and uh, there's some cool artwork in this and some fun fight scenes, so I enjoyed this more than I enjoyed other comics in that thing, and I'm interested to read the final issue of that, uh, and then there's uh, Alien, Black, White, and Blood, uh, issues two and three, uh, there are some interesting stories in here, they're really fun, um, I didn't realize it, but Black, White, and Blood was not specifically for Alien comics. It's actually a uh, new line for more adult-based comics in the Marvel line. Because there's like a, a Star Wars comic where it's like Darth Maul, Black, White, and Blood, and a few others. So uh, Marvel Zombies as well. So it seems like a new thing that they're doing instead of Punisher Ma- like the Back in the day, they had the Max line for their more adult comics. Whereas uh, in this one, it seems like Black, White, and Blood is their new... Uh, thing for doing more adult comics and these are a lot more gory and wild and interesting so uh, they're kind of set up like uh, old 2000 AD where there's like a a a a serialized story that kind of starts out both of these but then they're both packaged with two mini stories in between and the serialized story is kind of interesting where it's like uh, dealing with this uh, uh socialist uh commune that has like shipped off from earth and is going to a new planet but in order to reach the new planet it'll take a thousand years so um what they do is they have like this huge colony that's like self-sustaining on this giant space station and as they travel to their destination they like live the like socialist paradise essentially but then an alien chomps in and uh things go awry I, I think some of the commentary is a little bit... Uh, 
heavy handed to say the least and a little bit questionable. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to say entirely with this comic uh, as somebody who is a uh, far left person who definitely uh, ascribes to uh, socialism. Uh, It's kind of hard to uh, get exactly what they're trying to say, but the story is interesting nonetheless, where they're trying to save the colony that still exists. And it's all like the whole colony is in charge uh, by and ran by a synthetic. uh, And that has some interesting results. And the other two stories in both of these were pretty fun as well. There's a cute little doggy story in this one. And it's like a happy doggy story. It's like a nice one. I was like, oh, oh, I don't know if a doggy ever does well in alien stories. That's good. And then I read this, which was Ghost Rider number seven, The Trail of Blood. This is weird, man. This, apparently, the, this is from that the first series of Donny Ketch. Uh, I'm not saying not. It was Danny Ketch? I think it's Danny Ketch, uh, Ghost Rider, who is the uh, second Ghost Rider uh, after Johnny Blaze. So he takes up the mantle in the 90s. And you can tell it's a pretty dark, very adult uh kind of messed up 90s comic which is kind of just like a nice little surprise because i was like oh this is this is kind of messed up i kind of like this it's weird it's dark it's brutal um i i don't exactly know if the entire comic would be as enjoyable as this one issue is but at least had enough interesting elements that made me want to explore more because like this freaking villain scarecrow he's got like this pitchfork and he like murders my children in this <laughs> and you're like what okay i thought this was a comic book and he's all like come on captain america come and stab me stab me because he wants to kill captain america but then ghost Rider shows up and he's like yo bitch stop stop murdering children he's like but i want to murder children the only way to stab me is to murder me so then he just you know impales himself on a pitchfork i don't know it's weird and then some other plot line happens uh, based on his sister which is who is in this here and i don't oh moose what on god's green earth are you doing <laughs> what was she doing she was trying to move on the move all my pieces all of my my stains anyways those are the comics that i'm doing um and uh yeah that was a pretty fun uh time Okay, I lied. There's one more comment I, f- I forgot to talk about because I didn't have it in my pile. This is the second volume of Godzilla vs. Mighty Morphin Power Ranchers. And this one is... Uh, so, like, the first one, like, I didn't... I thought it was fun and a little silly, and I enjoyed it, but not as much as I was kind of hoping. Uh, this one seems much more as to what I wanted, where it's Godzilla in the Power Rangers universe, and it's a lot more goofy Power Ranger stuff put on Godzilla characters. So Godzilla has shown up, shown up on the normal Angel Grove of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and they're joined by the White Ranger, and it's before... So he's comes from, like, a different universe. It's kind of like universe hopping uh, and trying to, like, warn the Rangers and try to get the Rangers together to fight Rita Repulsa, who's, like, doing some Rita Repulsa shit in a different universe, and she's, like, chasing them all down. But because you got the White Ranger, you also have... it's In this continuity, it's, like, the Mighty Morphin before the right White Ranger showed up. So you have this really fun thing where you've got both um you know the green ranger and the white ranger in this so it's like uh you'll get the dragon zord and you'll get the oh i think it's a lion megazord i never liked the white ranger as much so (laughs) but anyways because the dragon is way cooler and anyways this is this is also a character from there are two characters from like different uh ranger shows like a uh, super sentai shows in japan so that's why they're kind of like so far different but anyways uh and the reason why because in the super sentai show the green ranger actually dies so there's after a certain point there's no longer footage with him in it that's why since tommy was so big they had to like figure out a way to get more footage with him so they brought over uh the white ranger costume which is from die ranger Anyways, instead of Zoo Ranger, which is what this one's from. Anyways, nobody cares about my random facts about the Power Rangers, but this was really cool. 
All right, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to watch a little bit of the Fallout television show. Toodaloo. So, unfortunately for everyone, I did spend my entire night watching the Fallout series. I just finished episode 8. It's like 1.30 a.m. And I'm just here to tell you, that show fucking sucked. <laughs> that was awful. That was bad. All of the outfits look so bad. There's like... The only likable character was like the weirdly sexy ghoul man. But other than that, everyone was like lame and boring. And like it's very weirdly like it feels kind of right wingy, even though they try to like be like, uh, because like all of the people of color are villains in this, like almost all of them. And you're like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like, what the fuck? The power armor looks awful. The storytelling in the last episode is awful and it ties in things like so it's like well this is the entire story of fallout everything ties together and it's like no bitch no i don't want that that's stupid and lame anyways i've got points from this and that's the only good thing about this but yeah this sucked awful terrible show um now i'm going to bed hopefully i forget the show ever happened and can go on the rest of my life just deleting this memory goodbye and i guess this is the end of the vlog obviously ugh what an end bye